my one big message? God will restore your joy. Question, how do you deal with guilt? Now, I'm assuming that sometimes you fall into sin and you feel guilty because if you don't and you tell me, no, Brother Bo, I'm not, I'm above that, then this message is not for you and you need to replace the speaker, right? <laughs> because I, I fall into sin and, and I do f go experience guilt. Now, the thing with guilt is this, how do you deal with it? It will determine your destiny. Believe me, why? Because in the Bible, you will find people who dealt with guilt in the wrong way. And one of them is a man by the name of Judas. And it says in the Bible right there that after he betrayed Jesus, you know what he did? It says there, he realized he sinned and he felt remorse. Now you might think that would be enough already. No, it wasn't. I'll tell you why. Repentance consists of two steps. The first is remorse, and the second step is return. And that's what he did not do. Peter, on the other hand, he betrayed Jesus also, denied him three times, and he had remorse, and he returned to the Lord. And today, as we come into this holy season of Lent, I am inviting you not only to feel remorse, because that's easy, but to actually go to the Lord and return to Him. Do you know that the Gospel of Matthew says that after feeling remorse, Judas killed himself. He hanged himself. Why? That's the wrong way of dealing with guilt. You know what Judas did? He became his own judge and he became his own executioner. He, talk, he basically talked to himself and he said, Judas, you're guilty and this is your punishment and I'm going to punish you right now. My dear friend, I have met a lot of people who have done the same mistake. They felt guilty and you know what they did? They became their own judges. They became their own executioner. They did not kill themselves physically, but they killed themselves psychologically. They sabotage their relationships. They destroy their career. They said no to opportunities. They actually lived a miserable life intentionally. Why? Because they felt and they thought that they deserve to be cursed. My dear friend, do not be your own judge. Let God be your judge. Let me tell you why. Because God is more merciful than you are. And can you declare that with me? Say those words, God is my judge. You know, we, we'd rather say other titles, right? Like God is my healer and God is my provider and God is my miracle worker. And, but can we say God is my judge and understand that so such wonderful good news that we are not our own judges, that the other people around us are not our own judges, that God is the one who is our judge. And guess what? This judge died for you. And so let me close by reading and praying with you Psalms 51, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. God is our judge. And verse 5, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in my womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. And then verse 12 says, restore to me the joy of my salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Deliver me from my guilt of bloodshed, O oh God, you who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Amen. My dear friend, pray with me. Lord, restore my joy. I return to you. You are my judge, and I surrender my life to you and entrust myself and I throw myself into the ocean of your mercy. 
in Jesus' name, amen.